What is up, everybody? Multimedia J in the house, on the mic, whatever you want to say for that. Okay. Well, here I was thinking that my Dysfunctionomy series would begin with a dramatic reading of the blog entry that I wrote on this topic a month. Actually, it was almost two months ago now at this point. End of January. It's almost the end of March now and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I'm still thinking of doing a dramatic reading of that audiobook style for this radio style series. But for the time being, a little tidbit, doozy, nugget, whatever you want to call this news article. Uh, yeah, or is it a news article? Is it opinion? No, it's not in the opinion section. But uh, it came up. That's what we're looking at with the picture for this segment here. But it came up and, <laughs> oh man, oh brother. I was hoping I could begin the Dysfunctionomy series with an, a dramatic reading of my blog entry that I wrote on this topic as kind of a primer for the whole thing, but it looks like I'm going to have to scrap that plan. Wall Street Journal, March 27th, 2013. The headline reads, Bad at Their Jobs and Loving It by Lauren Weber. I hope it's Weber. Every single person I've known with W-E-B-E-R as their last name, it was pronounced Weber. Everyone I've known everywhere who had that as their last name, Weber. So if if this lady right here is the first person with that with W E B E R as her last name, that's pronounced Weber phonetically, I apologize. But anyways, bad at their jobs and loving it. A company's best employees should also be its happiest and most engaged, but that's not always the case. A new study finds that in 42% of companies, low performers actually report being more engaged, more motivated, and more likely to enjoy working at their organization, for example, than middle and high performers do. The findings suggest many organizations are not holding employees accountable for their work, allowing the worst workers to skate by, says Mark Murphy, CEO of Leadership IQ, the Atlanta-based consulting firm that conducted the survey, etc., etc., etc. Low performers often end up with easiest jobs because managers don't ask much of them. Gee, you think? He said. So they're under less stress. Oh, emphasis. Gee, you think mine, of course, is not in the article. So they're under less stress and more satisfied. Oh, man, this is just nuts. Now, a quick dysfunctionomy 101 here for those that didn't read the article. This is a word that I kind of made myself by smushing together dysfunctional and economy. And the concept basically deals with the real problem with jobs in America right now. And things like that. Now, this idea of dysfunctionomy attacks two major misconceptions that exist in today's job market. The first being that the economy and the job market are one and the same, and they will both rise and fall at the same time. So as the economy improves, and it's been baby steps, uh, things have been slowly getting better, but we still have a ways to go before we're even close to where we were before the, uh, before the financial crisis that started this mess, as per the numbers I keep an eye on. At my blog, multimediaj.wordpress.com, click Great Recession Economic Charts for my link list to the Federal Reserve's uh, Research Division, St. Louis Fred, which, uh, or St. Louis Federal Reserve's Research Division, which graphs to the charts of various numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which was pretty interesting uh, that last this last go-round when it was in the news that someone at the Federal Reserve was talking all better days are ahead and stuff like that, while these Fred charts from the very same organization somewhere else in the organization told a very different story that the economy is still pretty much spinning its tires. But here's the thing. Even if things get better, even if the economy gets better, even if prosperity returns to this country whenever it does, under no circumstances does that mean that the job market needs to improve at the exact same time. That's one misconception that dysfunctionomy takes aim at. The other thing, and the bigger thing, and the thing that this article speaks to, that dysfunctionomy takes aim at, the misconception that this concept really points the cannon at and uh, starts lighting the fuse, is the idea that it's not so much that there are no jobs, but that companies have this, for whatever reason, the reasons for their reasons for doing so are open to speculation and debate. But for whatever reason, employers in this country simply want to give whatever jobs they do have to the wrong people. I have no clue why. 
that's open to speculation. But for whatever reason, employers just love doing everything they can to have the wrong people on their payrolls. No idea why, but it happens. I deal with it. My dad deals with it. Lots of folks I've seen on YouTube ranting about not being able to find a decent job, sometimes for up to years at a time, deal with it. Disgruntled 99ers who can't find stable employment deal with it. I hear about this stuff all over the place, and it makes me wonder, what did we win the Cold War for? We won We won the Cold War. The communism and the Iron Curtain fell in Europe. The Soviet Union dissolved. And for what? Nowadays, we get the Chinese being more capitalist than we are at times. <laughs> you know, the supposed communists are playing around more with uh, with ent- with uh, enterprise and entrepreneurialism and things like that sometimes than we are. I don't know. I'm not going to try and figure it out. But this this article, I will post a link to it. For however long the Wall Street Journal leaves this visible until they put this behind a paywall or something like that. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I've been so frustrated by this crap. I've been so furious to go into restaurants, stores, you name it, and see all kinds of people there with bad attitudes, lazy, apathetic people. It's those people that get to have the jobs. While people who actually give a crap and have far superior attitudes and work ethics either can't get their foot in the door or can't find anything stable. Meanwhile, I hear stuff like the satellite radio at the place I'm at right now the other night. One of the announcers hops on the mic in one of his many, in one of the serious XM's blah blah segments in between all the music they do on there. And here he is echoing all through the warehouse this, this, arrogant sounding radio disc jockey or i don't know i don't even know if satellite radio djs even do their stuff live a a lot of the perfection in how they deliver their segues and their discussions suspiciously sounds quite pre-recorded for a live broadcast but who said all broadcasting was live anyways many broadcasters put things on a delay (laughs) in case someone swears or something like that anyway but this is satellite they don't have to worry about those fcc thingamabobs but uh, or at least from what I know, maybe there's something I missed here. If there is, leave a comment. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, guy gets on the mic. He's like, oh, yeah, full time jobs with benefits are going to become a rarity in this country. Yeah, well, human greed kind of wrecks a lot of things in life. Did anyone ever consider that? Sometimes people get so arrogant, stuck up, and full of themselves that literally all that drives them is making everyone else, bumping everyone else underneath them, and uh, grabbing all they can for themselves, no matter what the, uh, no matter what that means along the way. You know, the end justifies the means. Eh, that kind of crap. Yeah, bad at their jobs and loving it. Uh, this is. <laughs> I will post a link to this article. Go read it, definitely. Uh, There's more stuff about the leadership IQ thing later in the article and stuff like that. But this is really the heart of the problem right here. Hiring managers, HR people, folks in charge of small businesses all over the place. For whatever reason, biggest buyer's market for labor and people who give a crap about working hard and doing well that any of us will ever see probably in our lifetimes Putting even the Great Depression, uh, giving even the Great Depression a run for its money with how things have been over the past several years. With all of this stuff going on, why is it that anybody anywhere with a bad attitude, a terrible work ethic, or just the wrong anything about them is tolerated? You know, last year, when I was first laid off, I went around and uh, went to some job fairs. One of them was hosted by one of the various temp agencies around here that uh, I guess they're no I heard that they went out of business or something. I don't know what's up with that. Someone tried calling them to look for another job because of this whole warehouse thing. They get, they're mad about it, too. And they uh, they this number is no longer in service. Hmm, interesting. But I can see why if this place went out of business, I can see why if it went out of business, why it's no longer on the map, because these folks were completely useless. They took my name and number and never had anything for me. Like, sorry, nothing, sorry, nothing, sorry, nothing, sorry, nothing. So anyways, but uh, this place, I was talking to the staffing coordinator at the unemployment office and when they had their open house, and they signed a bunch of people up for jobs that apparently didn't exist. <laughs> at least for me, because they never were useful at all. I was talking to this guy, and as I was going in to fill out the application and get myself on record with these people in case they had something that they could send me to, 
This guy was, he was chuckling because he's like, oh, this guy just came through and uh, he wants a job, but he doesn't want to work. Yeah, there are people out there with that attitude. They, they want paychecks, but they don't actually want to work. There are still people out there who are so oblivious to the way things are right now that they act like there's never been a recession, that there's no recession going on whatsoever. They, they go around and they do all of this stuff and, and they... <laughs> <laughs> and they just have terrible attitudes, but uh, but they end up working somewhere. And people who actually want to do something are unemployed for years on end. Something is very wrong with this system, folks. And I think this article really kind of brings some of it to light. When you've got people that are coasting like this, that, uh, that you know, they're, they're happy with their jobs because their managers know that they're slack asses and they don't... <laughs> They don't uh, uh, they don't ask much of them. I mean, seriously, and how much are these people making? I mean, we live in a country that's so broken money-wise these days that you've got college-educated baristas, janitors with PhDs, and office assistants doing data entry that needed a bachelor's degree to make $10 an hour. <laughs> Why? Please, somebody, please, somebody, tell me why. Whatever happened to entrepreneurial drive and stuff like that? And it's, it's at all levels, too. It's not just a big corporate thing. Small businesses do this all the time, too, with all the nepotism that goes on in small businesses and even smaller privately held companies that aren't just somebody working out of their garage or something or driving a truck around doing landscaping or being a franchisee and owning a, a McDonald's or a Subway or something like that. Yeah, You know... Uh, nepotism all over the place oh people don't oh there's no jobs supposedly so let me just hire all my friends instead of finding out who's and then oh, how come this business how come my business isn't doing as well as it should you know we wonder why 86 percent of small businesses die within five years of being founded in this country <sighs> i don't know and I think this should serve as the template slash pattern slash what to expect for future discussions on the very concept of dysfunctionomy, because this is a great example right here. And it's not just something I cooked up on my own just for fun. It's not just something that I that I, I'm just doing just to get views on YouTube or get people all worked up. This is a real problem. And here it is straight out of the Wall Street Journal, straight out of the mainstream media here talking about this very problem. Would anybody else like to think that I'm blowing this out of proportion or try to suggest to me that I'm making this problem any bigger than it actually is? Take a look outside your window, folks. It's here, it's happening, it's a problem, and it's going to hold back whatever recovery this country may have in the future. <sighs> That's enough getting worked up over this stuff for one radio-style segment. Check out the article, Bad at Their Jobs and Loving It, by Lauren Weber. I hope I'm saying that right. Wall Street Journal, WSJ.com. Link will be in the description. Till next time, this is Multimedia J Radio Style. Thanks for listening, and thanks for stopping by. This is Multimedia J, signing off. Multimedia J.